Hi, Meg. Hi. Just got the poster for the hijink show. Predator did a swell job, don't you think? Very good. This will certainly bring in the crowds. There might not be any crowds because there might not be any show. What do you mean? Tell him, Pat. Jerry Box can't produce our hijink show this year. He's not with the network anymore. He isn't with the network. You mean that Jerry Box got fired? No, he wasn't fired. Because of the great job he did producing and directing our last three hijinks shows, they've made him an assistant producer with a network in the East. Jerry Box, an assistant producer? Yep, and that leaves a gap in the show that wide. I tell you this, if we don't get an employee to produce this show, we're sunk. Hmm, looks like the way to get ahead in this organization is to become the producer of the hijinks show, make good, and then <laughs> up you go. <laughs> Everybody turned us down, flat. Well, well, that's understandable. Not everybody could produce the hijinks show. Now you've got to know a little something about production. Well, I'm emceeing the show. I can't do two jobs at once. I'll start off with a line of girls. I'll, I'll put all the secretaries in black and yellow mambo costumes. What do you think, huh? Absolutely breathtaking? We gotta think of somebody. And then, Fred, you'll come out and do your single. I'll have a nice backdrop in back of it. I'll throw a blue spot onto you. Now, wait, wait just a minute, Charlie. You're gonna produce the show? Why not? I produced the tug of war in my sophomore year in school. Think hard. We've got to think of somebody. Well, Mickey might be able to do it. Believe me, I'll do a swell job, Fred. Well, one good thing about it is if he's producer, we won't have to sit through his magic act again. <laughs> Look, you won't be sorry. I'm sorry already. I'll do a great job with the hijinks show. I'll spare no expense. Expense? What expense? The budget's only $250. <laughs> $250. That's right. They give Max Liebman half a million dollars. They give Rogers and Hammerstein two and a half million. Me, they give $250. <laughs> it's quite a challenge, isn't it? Well, I'll tell Mr. Brown we've decided on a producer. Good. You haven't made a mistake, believe me. I'd hate to be the one to deliver the news. Now, why say that, Dewey? I'm sure Mr. Brown will be very happy with the decision that we've made. Mulligan? Oh, no. <laughs> Say it isn't so. Mr. Brown, you've, you've come unplugged. I'm glad I was shaving with an electric razor when I heard the news. I might have cut my throat. But I'll do a good job with the hijinks, sir. Jerry Box always got us a big-name guest star. Who are you going to get? You, uh... You like Clark Gable? I like Gable very much, but you couldn't get him in a million years. Well, nothing ventured, nothing gained. You see, my mom happens to shop at the same market where Gable's agent's chauffeur's wife shops. Gable's agent's chauffeur's wife? Yeah. You see, it's, it's all in having the right connections. Yes, yes, Mr. Gable. Well, well, I'm sorry to bother you, sir. Well, if you can't make it, you can't make it. Thank you, sir. Gable can't make it. Michael, just for a Mom, moment. Mom, think please, I have one more call to make. It's very important. Just, just one second. Yeah. Come right, on. Hello, uh, Miss Monroe, please. Miss Monroe. Can't be Marilyn. <laughs> Marilyn? It is Marilyn. <laughs> Marilyn, this is Michael Mulligan calling. I am the producer of the IBC Hijinks show. Hi, Jinx. Hi, Jinx. You never heard of it? And you never heard of me? Imagine she never heard of me. Well, Miss Monroe, I was just wondering, what do you usually get for a, uh, a, a guest appearance? <laughs> well, yes, I... I understand, you see, but th th that's a little out of our budget price range. I was thinking of uh, somewhere in the vicinity of $250 in bus fare. And... <laughs> Hello? 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 Hung up on me. I wonder why. Gable refused me. Garbo. Marilyn Monroe. Even Thunderbolt the Wonder Colt turned me down. You produce this, you have your problems. I wonder how Max Liebman lives through it all. Michael, is a guest star really important to your show? Important? It's the frosting on the cake. I just have to have a guest star. All right. I know where you can get a guest star. You do where? The famous Nell Mulligan, singing and dancing star of the Follies of 1930. Ta-da! 
Mom? Now, look, son. If you want to make a deal, I'm her agent. Maybe I can talk her into coming out of retirement of the parts, right? Well, Mr. Bulligan, I, uh, I'm afraid I'd have to see her audition first, and then the price would have to be right. Oh, I demand top salary, $250, plus bus fare. In advance, I'm on to you, producers. Well, I, I still would have to see her audition. Uh, you see, I'm on to you agents. <laughs> All right, Nell, show them how you knocked them dead in McKeesport. I'll need a little music. Music coming up. Uh, what is it you want me to play for you? Oh, by the light of the silvery moon. Light of the silvery moon. It's good tune. Yeah, so what key do you do it in? Key? Oh, well, pick out anything you like. My horse is very flexible. You can't work without a spotlight. Here we go. By the light of the silvery moon, I want a spoon. Sing it, Ma. To my honey, I'll croon. can you do? What, what are the songs? Oh. oh, no, you don't. That's all the free sample you get till we see the contract. I know she sells a song very well, but can she do anything else? Well, she also dances. She was a smash in Omaha in 1928. Show him now. Oh, first I'll have to go change my costume. Change your costume? Oh, there's nothing cheap about this act. <laughs> Son, you haven't seen anything yet. When Nell Mulligan appeared on the stage, the whole fire department stood by. No kidding. Here you are, Joe. Uh, what's this for? Oh, I always dance with a partner. Oh, now, wait a minute now. Joe, oh. my career depends on this. A Swanee River, please, uh, Maestro. Coming up. <laughs> was terrific. How, how about an encore? An encore? Oh. At our age? No, but it would be sensational. You'd stop the show. The, the dancing mulligans. Oh, we're usually billed as the collapsing mulligans. Oh, my aching back. Mine, too. Oh, look, look, Mom, you've been on the stage. You did it before, and you can do it again. Oh, I'm sorry, Michael. You'll have to get someone else. There ought to be a lot of good vaudeville acts around town. Uh, huh? Yeah, I was reading in Hedda's column that P.L. Monk's just arrived from Europe. P.L. Monk? Who's he? Well, I never heard of him, but Hedda says he's a rage on the continent. Here, read it for yourself. Yeah. The international favorite, Pierre Lamont, just arrived from Europe for his American nightclub debut. He opens a limited engagement at the Coconut Grove in two weeks. The Rage of Paris is accompanied by his manager, Monsieur Antone. Say, if I could only land him for the hijinks. I wonder what he does. I'll bet he sings Shaboom in French. <laughs> I thought it was French. Here's the finish to my act. Chocolate cake. Stops the show every time. Thirty thousand francs. We? Oui? No, uh, uh two hundred dollars, sir. Oh, that's thirty thousand francs for my country. Plus omnibus. That's bus fare in your country. But the Pierre gets a great deal more money for his appearances. Yeah, I know, but think of the good neighbor policy. He'd be doing it for charity. Oh, it would give Pierre a chance to break his acting before an American audience. We'll do it. Then it's a deal. Uh, and now can I meet uh, Monsieur Lamont? Certain man. I go and get him. Oh, Excuse me, Monsieur. Yes, yes. That's good. Mr. Brown, Pat. Uh, it looks like I made the deal. What deal? Don't tell me you've sold the network. <laughs> Mr. Brown, no, of course not. But it looks like maybe I, I've got a very big name guest star for our hijink show. Oh, really, Nikki? Who is it? Well, hang on to your hats, but it looks like I've got Pierre Lamont. Pierre Lamont? Yes, the famous French entertainer. 
Yes, well, he'll, he'll add a continental flavor to the hijink show. Are you sure? Well, he'll add the romantic interest. He'll be suave, debonair. He'll, he'll be full of joie de vivre. <laughs> May I present Pierre Lamont. Well, uh, is that suave enough for you? I add a lot of sophistication to the show. Excuse me, sir, but why, why didn't you tell me that Monsieur Lamonk was a chimpanzee? You mean you didn't know? I hope you don't object. Pierre does not object to you being human. Well, a chimpanzee hardly fits in with my plans. Shh! <laughs> contact! <laughs> ah, monsieur! The contract is satisfactory. Well, maybe there'll be... Something in the small print he won't like. <laughs> well, you see, we put an amber spot on him, and it'll add more of a dramatic appeal. I still wish we could have gotten Marilyn Monroe. Well, don't you like his act? Well, what is it? So he roller skates and he rides a bicycle. I can do that. They don't pay me $250. Uh, pardon me, Monsieur Antoine. Oui, Monsieur. I don't mean to interrupt you, but is there anything else that Pierre could do that would be uh, the slightest bit more sensational? Oh, yes. He is a sensational bit, but he needs an assistant. He needs an assistant. Oh, fine. We're, we're all right. Freddy? Freddy. Uh, now, now, wait a minute. I'm not playing straight for any ape. Please, <laughs> he does not like to be called an ape. He is an artiste. Oh, well, then let him go to the zoo and get an ape to stooge for him, not me. Oh, well, look, don't be temperamental. Look, if you need a, an assistant, I'll be the assistant. Now, what do you want me to do? Take the apple. Mm -hmm. Stand over there. The apple and stand over... Oh, fine. Pierre, sur la boîte. Ah, très bien. Tu es très brave. <laughs> now, take the apple and put it on your head. On my head. <laughs> Wait a minute. What, what, what's he gonna do? Have you never heard of William Tell? William Tell? Sure, I, I've heard of William Tell, but look, wait now, wait, wait just a minute. Oh, Pierre is an expert marksman. You should see his trophy room. You're gonna look very good hanging over his fireplace, Mick. Don't forget to smile. Look, it's not the fact that I'm doubting his marksmanship. It's just that, look, I'm the only producer left. Oh, please, put the apple on your head. The delay is making him very nervous. Making Pierre nervous? Look, look, I hate to be a killjoy, but look, I'll get somebody else. Ah, I did not think you could do it. Has he, uh, has he ever done this before? Oh, many times, but never with a life target. Silver. What's going on here tonight? Oh, we have an honored guest for dinner tonight. We do? Yeah, Michael's bringing Pierre Le Monk and his manager. Pierre who? Oh, Le Monk, that big French star we read about in the paper last night. Uh, I wanted to watch the fights tonight. Oh, when Michael phoned, he was in such a rush, I didn't get a chance to ask him what Mr. Le Monk liked. Well, if it's anything that'll help Michael with his show, I guess we'd better cooperate. I'll go and get washed up. Oh, Joe, don't use the guest towels. They're for Mr. Le Monk. <laughs> I wonder if I should serve wine. Yes, come right in, Mr. LeBunk. Take yourself at home. Okay, let me help you off with your coat, if I may. Yes, here, I'll take it. <laughs> oh, English tweeds, huh? <laughs> oh, who's your tailor? Here, I'll, I'll, I'll hang it right up here. Only take just a moment. There we are. Yes, now just, uh, just sit yourself down here and enjoy the funnies. Remember, uh, Mr. Antoine said that you should do everything I say until he arrives. I'll go out in the kitchen now and see how Mom's coming along with dinner. Yeah. <laughs> Mom's dinner ready yet? 
be here already? Yeah, uh, Mr. Pierre is here, but Mr. Antoine stopped by the drugstore for some nose drops. He says he'll be here a little later. Oh, isn't that a beautiful rose? It sure is. You know, that's the way to impress an actor is to feed them. They all like to eat. Oh, Mom, look, I forgot now, to tell you over the phone. Everything's done but the salad. But, but Mom, listen. Oh, please, not... Michael, I'm trying to get dinner but together. So I wonder if he likes his roast beef rare. I don't know, but I, have you got any bananas? Bananas? Or peanuts? Peanuts? Oh, no, I don't want to spoil his appetite. Uh, dear, do me a favor and go out to the garage and get some ice cream out of the deep freeze. Hello, Michael. <laughs> I've never objected before to the friends Michael brings home, but that's the last straw. It's so loud, he'll hear you. Michael, where did that monkey come from in there? Listen, talk that way about Michael's friends. You mean he's not a monkey? Shh, he's a chimpanzee. He's a chimpanzee. Chimpanzee? Just a fancy name for a monkey. Well, I tried to tell you, Mom, but you were so busy fixing his dinner that... Pierre Lamont is a chimpanzee. And a very talented chimpanzee, too. Yeah, well, he's not going to make monkeys out of us. That's the trouble with that. Because once they become famous, they think they can get away with anything. Pierre, come down. The show should have gone on five minutes ago. You picked a fine time to get temperamental. Pierre, the show must go on. Why don't you call Antoine again? I did. I called him three times and nobody answers. Pierre, look, your audience is waiting. You can't let them down. Come on now, Pierre. This is, this is no way for a star to act. Think of Edwin Booth, Martin Fontaine, Barrymore. Wait a minute. He never heard of any of those people. What's the matter? Th think of uh, Lassie. Think of Rin Tin Tin. Think of Trigger. <laughs> we got him in, now we got him cornered. Right. Let's advance on him. Hey, hey, look, look, look out. Wait, wait, wait. Oh. Here, look, don't go anything like that. It's not in your contract. Take it easy. Steady, boys. Steady. Wait a minute. Something tells me we're not getting through to him. Wait a minute. Here. Take it easy. Easy now. Steady, boys. Oh, oh, boy. How temperamental can you get? We gotta do something. He's not gonna go on, Mick. Right. You might as well call the whole show off. We'll do the show without him. I'll take his place. You? You'll you never fit in his clothes. Just introduce the first act, will you, please? They're gonna want their money back. Please help me, Freddy. Hey, Mulligan! Pierre? No, it's me! Hi there. I'm Mickey Rooney. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, good evening and welcome to the IBC Sixth Annual Hijinks. Uh, there'll be a slight change in our program tonight, replacing our guest star, Pierre Lamonc, the amazing chimpanzee, will be Mickey Mulligan, the amazing Mickey Mulligan. <laughs> I don't know. He ate a couple of my cigars this morning. I guess I made him sick. Uh, and now to start our show, we present the pride of the mailroom. You all know her, Betty Lou and her magic bells. Thank you. Uh, for my first number, I would like to play one of my own original compositions. The International Broadcasting Company Hijinks Waltz uh, in the key of C sharp minor. <laughs> to speak louder. I'm hearing bells. Keep an eye on Pierre. I'm going to change. Oh, okay. You ho Pierre? Remember now, no tricks, pal. I'm the boss around here.
don't know about you, but I'm ready to confess. Hmm? Never mind. I'd like to get my hands on the guy that gave her her first bell. played five of the ten selections that I had planned on, but uh, uh, we don't have time for the others. <laughs> and now, the treat that you've all been waiting for, Pierre Lamont. <laughs> oh, uh, I I'm sorry, uh, I made a mistake. This is not the treat that you've been waiting for. It's Mickey Mulligan. Thank you, Gerson. Okay, Mick. <laughs> and thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and any of you network vice presidents who may be out there this evening. Thank you. My name is Mickey Mulligan. Thank you, thank you kindly, ladies and gentlemen. As you know, last year, the hijinks, I did my magic act, and a few things went wrong. Well, I've corrected those things this year. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna let that stop me, no, sir. Now, watch. The hand is quicker than the eye. Hey. <laughs> you will all turn your backs I'd appreciate it very much while I pick up my act. of the magic chest will absolutely disappear. Ha, ha, ha. And now, calling your attention to a small grapefruit. We will put grapefruit into magic chest and the grapefruit will disappear. Starting with the grapefruit and working our way up to bigger things. <laughs> yeah. you'd be pleased to know that the Employees' Welfare Fund made a very nice profit from the hijinks show. Well, that makes me very happy, sir. We were all very impressed with it. Thank you. Thank you. As a matter of fact, this morning, a network vice president's had a meeting, and it was unanimously agreed upon that the one responsible for the success of the show should get a long-term contract. You don't mean it. Oh, I, I hope I'll make a very good producer for the network, sir. You? Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Uh, I mean the one who really made the show a success. Pierre Lamont. <laughs> Mickey Rooney will be back in just a moment. And now a word from next week's sponsor. Those were the magic words from the folks who bring you our next show. Be with us then, won't you, friends? Incidentally, I have a brand new trick for you. Watch. folks. <laughs>